Hello, everyone. Uh, Stani Shelton here with you with Dan Gordon from PCO Bookkeepers. Um, we thought we would just do a quick installment. There's been a lot of changes since we've done this COVID-19 uh, COVID Proofing Your Business series, and there's been a few developments with the PPP program, and so we thought we'd spend just a few moments and talk through those. Of course, I am Donnie Shelton. I'm with Cole March. I um, also own Triangle Pest Control. Um, we offer digital marketing services um, through Technology Stack, as well as digital platforms that you can use to grow your business. Of course, we have Dan on, on with us. Dan, you want to talk a little bit about PCO Bookkeepers before we get into this? Sure. Uh, good morning, Dan Gordon. Uh or good afternoon whenever you view this. Um, PCO Bookkeepers is an accounting firm that caters to the pest control um, community. Uh, we do tax preparation, we do monthly CFO services, and uh, we also uh, uh, provide merger and acquisition consulting and brokerage services. And uh, so we've got a lot of insight uh, with over 300 clients and uh, running over $600 million worth of revenue, pest control revenue through our uh, accounting firm, um, we have a pretty good pulse on what's going on in the industry, and uh, so. Uh, um, but but this uh, uh, PPP loan uh, has been uh, dominating the news, dominating uh, the the minds of our clients, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, items that, that that change and interpretations that change, and so. Uh, Today would be a good day to uh, talk about what we know now as of uh, May 1st. Yes, I mean, Dan, it's been interesting. Um, you know, when the PPP program first came out, it was pretty much a free for all. It was like, hey, if you've been affected by COVID-19, which at the time, I mean, who hadn't been affected by COVID-19? We were all at home, which I am still personally still at home. Um, I think there's some spaces that's trying to open up, but, um, but they ran out of money. I know that's a big shocker to everyone, uh, but they ran out of money within two weeks. Um, there has been a new round of funding um, and also kind of some new requirements. And so I thought we'd spend some time talking about these new requirements. We talked a little bit about kind of what's happening in Washington and how this is changing, because there's no doubt the program in its initial state versus kind of the program now, and especially what we're seeing with all the changes, very different at least from my perspective. And so you, just, I, I think probably just give us a little bit of a background, just kind of catch us up to speed on from our last webinar when we talked about this PPP program. Sure, so the PPP program was uh, really, uh, when, when it was first conceived, it was about uh, keeping people employed. We had this tremendous shock to our economy and the government um, uh, in an unusual fashion uh, got together, both Democrats and Republicans, and, and, and <laughs> Passed some some legislation that uh, that uh, in 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 very short I'm sorry, order. Did you say did you say unusual that, that, that they got together? I would say that's probably yeah. yeah. Keep going. So, so, <laughs> so they uh, they 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 got together, passed this legislation, uh, among other things, with the, with the CARES Act, uh, uh, created this PPP thing, and uh, basically it's a payroll protection uh, uh, program. And uh, what what it it, when, when they conceived of it, it was more about, oh my gosh, our economy shut down, we've got to keep people employed. Um, it had nothing to do with whether Donnie's business was going to succeed or fail or go up or down or mine or yours. It was about keeping people employed. And so what they did is they said, okay, well, uh, all you need to do is apply for the loan. Uh, um, and if you meet certain criteria, uh, some or all of that loan will be forgiven. And basically, uh, you, it, it was a two-page application where you basically said that you're not a criminal, uh, that uh, you uh, attest to certain things, and uh, that you provide information uh, uh, about payroll. So what they did is they said, okay, we're going to uh, give you a, um, uh, a loan in the amount of uh, 10 weeks of your payroll, and we'll talk about the calculation and how that worked later, but 10 weeks of it, we're going to give you that loan, and then once you receive that loan, you have eight weeks to spend it down on uh, payroll, and again, we'll go through the calculation. Um, you, uh, it, it also, uh, you can spend the money on rent, you can spend it on utilities, you can spend it on uh, mortgage interest. And- no. um, Dan, I think this is really important because 
I remember when this first happened and they were announcing what was going to be part of the program and they kind of released this application. And I remember calling my banker and being like, am I seeing this? Like, is this really free money? And he's like, yeah, he's like, everyone is surprised, you know, and, and the, and I think the intent was, is let's get the money out as quickly as possible. Um, and I remember saying, are you sure? And he's like, absolutely. He's like, everyone's looking at this like, Hey, it's free money. So, um, Anyway, so continue. I think that's it, an important point. It, it, yeah, no, it's become a total political hot potato after the fact, right? So a lot of the money went out first round, and we're we're, we're in the second round here. But uh, basically, um, you attested to the fact that um, uh, you know that that, that you uh, feel that you'll be harmed by the crisis, and if you could attest to that fact, then uh, you're eligible for the money. Well, who isn't? on that day or even now, um, you know, uh, uh, sure or unsure that, 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 that you're going to uh, uh, be affected by uh, the COVID. I mean, you, you will, uh, whether it's today or if this goes on for many more months, you'll, you know, so we don't really know. And so what happened is everybody attested to it. And, you know, and when you attest to it, you didn't lie. You, you don't know what's going to happen. And now all of a sudden you've got treasury regulations and FAQs coming out. And again, remember, regulations are written by regulators and their interpretations of the law. They are not the law. OK, so um, I subscribe to a lot of newsletters from law firms and accounting firms, and, and there's a lot of different opinions. But, um, you know, uh, it, it seems to me that, okay, once the law is passed and uh, in perfect uh, fashion, the way the government works, there's a bunch of grandstanding. And so uh, a lot of these senators and congressmen, um, you know, uh, are, are, you know, pounding the table and saying, my goodness, um, uh, you know, what about the oversight? Well, that wasn't really conceived at the beginning, and now all of a sudden it is. So some of the rules have changed. Uh, um, and, and, and let's go through some of the slides because I have a couple of interesting ones. Uh, well, I was going to say, you know, I think the, you know, probably the, you know, I think the intent, everyone was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. We passed this. We're helping small businesses. We're doing something. There's this true $2 trillion package that we're putting in, and $350 billion is going to be for small businesses. And then the Lakers got their paycheck loan, right? It's all about the Lakers. It's all about the, the Lakers. Lakers. And I'm, and Chris. I'm not a Lakers hater, right? I like LeBron just like everyone else. But, but of course, that story gets sensationalized, which, you know, did Lakers break the law getting a PPP loan? Right. They did. No, it was just no. bad. It was just a exactly. bad look. And, and, and Ruth Chris Steakhouse and full transparency, I like Capitol Grill a whole lot better, but, uh, <laughs> But, you know, these are big companies that, um, you know, it's easy for politicians to go after and say that they're fat cats. The Lakers probably didn't need the money. Um, does does uh, Ruth Chris need it? Well, Ruth Chris is, is a restaurant organization. They employ dishwashers and wait staff and chefs and whatnot, and their restaurants are shut down. So, um, yeah, they probably could use the money. But what 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 we did and, uh, you know, or, or what came out in, in this FAQ and uh, more specifically, uh, there's one per particular FAQ where they talk about um, what is uncertainty. And rather than um, uh, they, they kind of pivoted from this is about saving, you know, uh, payroll to do you have the means to save the payroll? So it's a means test. OK, so what they said is, uh, well, if you've got money in the bank and if you've got access to uh, credit lines or public markets or, or whatever, um, you may not need the money. But the fact of the matter is, if I got the money and I keep people employed that I otherwise may have furloughed because uh, of the whole situation, but I, I, I kept them employed. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to say, well, I've got to give that money back. Well, who takes care of paying those those people? I've already paid them, and that's uh, you know that that that's a huge problem. So uh, so, um, so I was going to say let's I want to get into that because I think later on in the in the webinar we're going to talk a little bit about the the changes because you're absolutely correct. Kind of the requirements on the first round versus the requirements in the second round very different, and it all goes around this whole concept of what is your real need. Um, but you know it was interesting of who got funded and who did not get funded on the first round. Um, 
it looks like to me, depending on who you banked with, uh, obviously the timing that you got your application in, but I think the probably the more important part is who do you bank with and how fast did they get their uh, act together and get their application in. And so I know there's some folks on our webinar who did not get funded the first round. Hopefully they have been funded by now in the second round. But so let's answer this question. What if I did not get funded the first round? Now what? So there is a second round and you can make application. But honestly, I, and I've spoken to several bankers, most of the people who are getting funded in the second round are those who got shut out of the first round and they're recycling those applications. Yeah. So more likely than not, if you apply today, you're probably not going to get it um, unless you have a good relationship with your banker. Now, I say that kind of on the QT because there's a lot of um, politicians, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, having temper tantrums over these banks who are favoring their best clients. And the fact of the matter is, uh, the SBA is Hang going on. to- favoring, favoring their best commissions. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> well, <laughs> clients and commissions, but, but think about this, right? So the money is actually a loan and then some of it gets forgiven. The, the bankers, if you think about this, now we in pest control, probably aren't getting hit as hard as certain industries like restaurants and bars and, and bowling alleys and things like that. More likely than not, those folks who take the money are going to go bankrupt and never pay back the money. Okay. Right. So yeah, banks are looking for, um, you know, people that they think have good credit and, um, you know, are going to pay back the money because um, what they're going to do is they're going to package up these loans and sell them on just like mortgages. Okay. But the, the fact of the matter is um, some of the smaller banks who are big SBA lenders had their systems a whole lot better than some of the bigger ones. Like we applied to Chase and we got a confirmation to Chase that, uh, or from Chase that said, uh, we got your information. Please don't call us. Please don't email us. We don't have a website that you can go on to check the status. We'll be in touch. And two weeks later, I got a rejection, said, uh, sorry about it, you know. And so I went to a smaller bank and uh, I immediately, uh, um, I was uh, within, on the second round, I actually got my money uh, within a day. Um, and then uh, yesterday, I actually heard from Chase. They said, hey, we, we think that you might qualify, uh, but I've already got my money. I, I, this, so, this is what's going on. Um, so, but, so the take home on, here is, on the commissions, is, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, so the take home here is, is that, you know, your bank may or may not have been ready to go. Even if they were ready to go, there may have been, and I, by the way, I have to be really careful on how I say this. There may have been some reshuffling of applications based on risk and also based on commission, right? We don't know that. That's all speculative. Um, but there's have already been lawsuits filed with accusations of that. Um, so hopefully, and, and I agree with you 100%, um, if, if you did not get your funding the first round, hopefully on the second round, you will get it. If you're just now starting the application process, I don't know if there's going to be enough funding there. So, so now, well, here, so now they can't go ahead. Just saying. So, so let's get back to that commission uh, that, that you had brought up, which I think is kind of interesting. So, if I'm a banker, um, basically, if I do a loan for three hundred fifty thousand or less under this program, I get a five percent commission. That doesn't come out of your funds; the government pays it. If I do one from three fifty to uh, two million, I get three percent and over two million I get one percent. Now obviously it's a lot easier to do one of these five million dollar ones and get the one percent from a, a great uh, client who's got great credit but if you think about it if I'm the bank what am I going to do? I'm going to do a bunch of three hundred and fifty thousand dollar loans and if you look at the stats and one of the stats was that the average loan was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars let's assume that the entire program between both tranches over uh, 500 billion dollars at five percent uh you know that is you know 25 billion dollars in commissions and so there's a huge money grab over this you've also got brokers who are out there who were referring to banks and expect a piece of that and you've got lawsuits from brokers suing banks over commissions so it's it's a huge political hot potato it's a huge money grab 
um, it's it's you know it's not the whole kumbaya thing that, that that everybody thought that it was on day one, and it's only going to get worse. So now the government says, okay, we're out of money. We're going to refund this. Uh, when I say refund, not like actually give the money back, but they're going to refund the program. They're going to add some more funding to it. And of course, at this time, now the news media jumps on the bandwagon and they start calling out companies like Steak Shack, the LA Lakers, and these other folks who, by the way, again, never broke the law, did everything according to their program guidelines when it first came out, and they started adding guidelines. So what's up with this new round of funding? Let's talk through that real quick. So again, it's this means test that, that uh, we discussed before about uh, whether you have access to capital, uh, either you know uh, cash in the bank or credit lines and whatnot, but it's also retroactive to the first tranche. So if you think that you're in good shape uh, because you were funded in the first tranche, you're subject to uh, this oversight. Now, most of our clients, uh, unless you committed fraud in your application, you should be okay. Um, and uh, again, if you've committed fraud, then you know you're going to be subject to to to, to uh, criminal penalties. But really, it's going to come down to um, you know uh, when you submit your application for forgiveness on the loan. Um, you know, it, it, uh, uh, you're going to have to uh, supply some documentations. This is documentation. really important, and I just want to make sure that you know because there is a forgiveness window that if for whatever reason you the government says hey you you think you don't meet this needs test you can give this money back and no harm no foul but i think you know like for a case of like triangle and even coal march right when we use a peo i ran a report i submitted it done i have heard cases of folks like and i guess it probably depends on your bank too like our bank required some form of justification for what your payroll is going to be I don't know that was the case with all banks. And so if there is someone who said, hey, my payroll was this, but it really wasn't that, I would say I would be giving that we, money back ASAP. We, we, we definitely um, have clients that put it through, got it funded based on what they requested. And for example, the, the employer portion of payroll taxes are not supposed to be in that calculation. But we have clients who got funded for that amount because it went through so quickly. The mm -hmm. bank that I dealt with that got me through pretty quick, they had their uh, processes pretty tight because they had a know your client checklist. And I spent several hours on a two page application putting all of the documentation together. And that's I. the kind of yep. thing that's going to, that's the kind of thing that's going to uh, come up in a, um, a document request when you go for for, for uh, the uh, forgiveness. So, Donnie, if you can move some of the slides, I know you're in charge of the slides. I am. Well, one one more thing here because I think this is important. Uh, as since we're on this topic, is will the SBA review individual PPP loan files? So, as of now, the first line of defense is the bank, right? Mm -hmm. So, your banker will be. Uh, requesting the documents. Now, they'll be submitting it to the SBA, but remember how many loans there are out there. If if you think about an IRS audit, the IRS right now, your chances, if, if you've, you know, if you're not doing anything uh, funny, your chances of being audited are probably one in 300. That's because of the manpower of the IRS, right? Now, I don't know what the manpower of SBA or this oversight will be, and I don't know how many loans are going to get done. But the fact of the matter is, if they audit half of them, you've got a 50-50 shot at not being audited. Okay. Right. And by the way, just because you're audited doesn't mean that you're in trouble. They're just confirming, you know, they're keeping honest people honest, right? Right. And that's that that that's that's what you're doing. So yeah. Yep. So next one, which kind of goes along with this, they released an update to FAQ number 31, and we've talked about this. They basically defined um, what needs means. Um, and so this kind of, this is the language that they use. Um, and I mean, I can just, you can read it there, but it basically says you must certify that you've been harmed by the Corona crisis and that PPP is necessary to maintain operations. Now, I can tell you if you asked a hundred different people, um, you would probably get a hundred different answers as to you know whether or not I've been harmed, right? Um, 
it, the, the part that I think is pretty interesting about um, this entire statement is, you know, ability to access sufficient to support their ongoing operations, liquidity, you know, sources of liquidity sufficient to support their ongoing operations. And so is that based on my goals? Is that based on uncertainty? Is that, I mean, it's just, I think it's still very gray. So here, but, here's an interesting one. So if you read the actual application, and I'm looking at a copy that I signed, the, the attestation that you made was current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. That's a whole lot different than saying that um, uh, that you have been harmed. In fact, Senator Marco Rubio, who's one of the guys on the oversight uh, committee, he basically said um, that um, he's willing to subpoena companies as uh, um, he chairs this panel uh, to prepare oversight. And what he is saying is that, quote, borrower's requirements that specify that a business should make a good faith certification that the uncertainty of current economic conditions makes the loan necessary to support um, ongoing operations. Um, that, that's what it says. And what he's saying is any business, regardless of side, must certify that they've been harmed by the crisis. Well, those are two different statements. Do you think you're gonna be harmed or are you harmed? And oh, by the way, that we're in the first inning of this thing, right? We don't know whether we're going to be harmed currently. Pest control companies, right. for for the most part, or most of our clients are saying, you know, we're 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 okay. But three three months from now, that could change. That could change drastically. And so, what the what they, they were actually pretty clever about it, uh, coming back and, and not saying, well, you've been harmed because your revenue is down. Although, I'm sure that a year from now, when the lawsuit starts, that that will be. Uh, you know, one of the uh, criteria. But what they're saying is, do you have access to capital? And again, I go back to the fact that we're changing the rules. I may have laid some people off if I didn't get the loan, and all of a sudden I'm paying them, and now you're telling me that I don't qualify for the loan. Right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. So let's, um, so since we're on this topic of forgiveness, let's talk about that. How long do you think? So, you know, the, just so everyone knows, your eight week period starts when when you get the money the eight week clock starts right and like you before said you, before the, the, you go on that yeah. could change the AICPA which is the governing body of CPAs has made recommendations to uh, Congress and and they have a powerful lobby and Congress listens to them on accounting issues they have stated that they believe that the eight week period should start when the state that you live in opens it up again. In other words, they, they take off the uh, stay at home. That's not the law, that's not the rule, but that's what the AICPA is is recommending and has already submitted that to Congress. Again, changing the rules, okay? But if that's the case, that's probably a better me measurement time because you're not gonna pay people to stay at home at that point, you're gonna uh, right. you know, uh, uh, pay them to, to, to work. <clears throat> So, well, it's yeah, but currently the way, way currently the way it's written though is that when you get your money, the eight week clock starts, and then at the end of that eight weeks, there's an evaluation, right? You get a ten week loan, you got an evaluation for eight weeks, and then you know, but there's no timeline as to okay, now there's an that eight week period is done. Now when will I know that I'm either forgiven or I'm not, right? And so how yeah, long do you think that's going to take? I, I, I don't think that from 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 the bank's perspective that's an issue. From our perspective, the the uh, loan that the the non forgiven portion doesn't start for six months. So, you know, if it takes a month, who cares, right? But you're going to have to at the end of eight weeks uh, certify that you paid a certain amount of payroll, that you paid a certain amount of rent, that you paid a a, a certain amount of utilities and uh, mortgage interest, and they're going to ask for documentation showing that that's what you paid. Now, the reason, if, if you think about it, they gave you the 10-week loan, but they're giving you eight weeks to pay it back or or eight weeks of, of activity to, to, right. to, to forgive. So in if, if you want to optimize your efforts, you're going to run up your payroll, you're going to pay your rent, you're going to pay your utilities and whatnot, and try and get the whole thing forgiven. Now, if you don't, the rest turns into a loan. Okay, and uh, so that's 
you know, that's that 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 that's the crux of it. But as far as when will you know whether it's forgiven? Mm, I think that you know, it, I'm sure it'll take a little bit of time, but I don't know that it's 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 that important. Uh, other than for planning purposes in six months. By the way, some people who, the, the, the loan portion gets paid back in 24 months. So if you got a million dollar loan and none of it gets forgiven, those payments are massive. So mm, you yeah. gotta think about yeah. that. For sure. So we have already answered this question as to when the clock starts for now, as of May 1st, 2020. <laughs> um, right. Next question is, is what is actually included in the payroll calculation? So payroll is your gross wages, and that includes wages, hourly, overtime, uh, bonuses, um, commissions, um, you know, anything that, that goes into gross wages. It also includes the state portion of employer taxes, uh, usually SUDA, uh, state unemployment tax and whatnot. It includes health insurance that you pay on behalf of uh, uh, of your employees, uh, 401k matches or pension matches, um, any other type of benefit. Uh, if you, you know, give disability insurance or uh, life insurance, those premiums and whatnot, all of that goes into the calculation. What does not go into the calculation is the employer portion of FICA, which is your Social Security and your Medicare. It's 7.65 percent. Okay. So if you just take your cash requirement off of your payroll report, you've got to remove that uh, that uh, FICA portion um, right. uh, to, to come up with the number. And since we're on kind of what's included in forgiveness, um, what is included in as far as what we talked about? Um, let's talk about rent real quick. So what what you know? There's, what, let's get into that. What does that mean? So rent. Rent is your office rent um, and, and, and whatnot, but I was speaking to a banker the other day and because, you know, and, and, and she she seemed very aggressive. That's why I like her. But uh, she uh, I, I said, look, what about related party rents? Like I own a building in a separate LLC and yes. I'm paying myself in, in that LLC. Is that rent? And she said, we believe and, you know, <laughs> when they start off that way, we believe that if you're charging fair market value, that you won't have a problem. If you, I, I was gonna say, I know a lot of owners who do that, right? And what is fair market value? I mean, again, if the bank's doing the certification, you know, I again, it's uh, anyway. The, the, yeah. the bank is, if you're dealing with a local bank, they know what you, the local real estate, com, uh, you know, uh, market is like. So, you know, if 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 you're trying to juice it, they'll know. All right. So, okay. So that's payroll. That's rent, now utilities. So utilities is, you know, your electric and uh, water and sewer and whatnot. But an interesting thing, and I still have not gotten clarity on this, and a lot of accountants and lawyers are bringing it up, that service businesses, the fuel in their vehicles counts as utilities. So uh, what oh, I was nice going to do. Yeah, so what, what, what I was going to say is it, it's extremely important it's not a requirement, but but my thinking is you set up a separate account, you put this money in that account, you pay your payroll from the account, you pay your rent from the account, you pay your utilities from the account, and mortgage interest, which is another item that, that you're allowed to deduct. And so then you say, well, why do I need a separate account? I could just show them what's on my bank statement. Well, as a CPA, I've been through countless audits. And the, the thing that you never want to give to an auditor is too much information. You don't want to give him your bank statement so he can he or she can look at everything, right? If you've got a bank statement that just covers this stuff, you're probably in better shape because no questions arise, okay? What that means, though, is if you pay your fuel bill out of there and we're wrong, so what? We knock that out of the calculation. But I definitely would include my fuel uh, bills um, out of the um, uh, specific account. Now, again, as of May 1st, 2020, um, a particular politician has said, anything over 2 million is gonna have a full audit. What does that even mean, right? <laughs> so, it, you know, that that's again, one of those grandstanding things, right? Because what does it matter how much it is? If I am 
if I employ 499 employees, because uh, you can only employ 500 under the program, and you only employ two, shouldn't I be able to get a bigger loan to pay my employees? So that's a bit of grandstanding. But if you got over $2 million, be prepared for an audit. If you got under $2 million, I would be prepared for an audit anyway. What does an audit entail? Basically, you're going to, um, there, there's two two aspects to it. Number one, did you need the money at all? And number two, if you're asking for forgiveness, um, you know what were those uh, payments that you made, and what is what kind of backup documentation uh, do you have? Um, now, um, as far as uh, looking for forgiveness, uh, you're going to need your payroll records. You're going to need your uh, 941 uh, tax returns, which are payroll returns. Uh, you're going to need your uh, state unemployment forms, um, and uh, you're going to need from the payroll company the uh, payroll registers for that period. Okay, what are you going to need for um, rent, canceled checks? Uh, somebody might want to see a lease that you signed. Okay. Uh, for utilities, those will be utility bills along with the uh, canceled checks, uh, including fuel and whatnot. And uh, if you're going to make uh, interest payments, uh, that that would uh, you know you, you need to have the loan documentation for the interest. What's more interesting is uh, if you get audited and they say that well you should have never got this. And um, I got a newsletter from a law firm, and in typical law firm fashion, they wrote this really long email about um, you know what to do and and you know uh, lawyers like to cover their butts and and and, and um, you know uh, and kill deals and kill deals <laughs> and um, uh, you know but but you know they they want to make sure that they've you know it's not enough that you have a belt it's not enough that you have suspenders you have to have a belt and suspenders right that's that's mm -hmm. um, and that that's uh, so uh, I'm just going to read a few of the bullet points. Um, you need to uh, collect and maintain records of company employee count and hour requirements. I don't have a problem with that. Um, Pre-COVID-19 operations and subsequent decline, cost and access to capital, cash on hand, budget forecasts and reforecasts, financial metrics that you use to, um, you know, determine, uh, you know, what the future looks like. Um, uh, maybe creating an internal memorandum summarizing the nature of the current economic uncertainty, both current and foreseeable, that makes a PPP request necessary to support ongoing operations. Hang on, hang so, on. So if I got a company of five people, I'm going to create an internal memorandum. <laughs> you could probably pay the law for $800 an hour to create right? this internal memorandum. I'm serious, but, yeah, you just said that. Yeah. But, but, but these are some of the things that folks are saying, right? And by the way, I can craft a, an internal memorandum today. It doesn't make it true, right? right? Yeah. Okay, sure. but 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 uh, a, a lot of times what happens is uh, uh, when you're in a, a situation where you're trying to prove something, if you can go back and show your notes, what you were thinking at the time, uh, that does have some credibility. Um, you know, uh, the, the last one I thought was interesting. Um, uh, contemporaneous documentation of, of the company's justification for seeking the loan, if current, accurate, and complete, would be uh, to provide helpful support for the company's good faith basis for making uh, the necessity certification. How do you do that, right? On on the yeah. day when this when when the economy shut down, everybody thought that we were in big trouble um and we still are in big trouble we're we're in the first or second inning of this thing you know we don't we don't know how this whole thing's going to end up right and so um you know um i think that uh, i sent out an email last week um uh, that scared a lot of people and the email basically it's funny my 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 uh, mailbox got filled up and, and my phone rang off the hook and said so what are you telling us to give back the money if you look at my email, the last paragraph in bold letters say, I do not recommend you give back the money. I recommend that you keep impeccable records. That's what yeah. I recommend. Right. You know, unless you committed fraud, um, now there is a, a case to be made for those uh, uh, people who received the PPP in excess of the amount that they should have got, like by including the FICA. Now that was that was on the bank because the original application said that it was included, right? And if you receive that amount, 
I probably would go back to the bank and say, listen, I got to give this portion back because that's, um, you know, that was not includable. But uh, other than that, I don't think that you should give back the money unless you committed fraud or you really think that you don't, you know, that, 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 that this whole thing doesn't apply to you. And, and again, just because we're doing well now as an industry doesn't mean right. that three months right. from now that, that, that we don't hit the skids and, and, and it really that, that's And I think that's probably the key issue here is just the uncertainty, right? No one knows. And so it's like, in, in, and I agree with you 100%. We got the money. We're keeping the money. And, you know, and, and I, I'm going to, I'll answer this question here as far as what we're doing is, you know, once you get the money, what's the first thing you should do with it? Um, <clears throat> I would say spend it on marketing. Put it in a separate account. account. <laughs> <laughs> spend it all on marketing. No, uh, what right. I would say, I mean, for us, like right now, you know, we're kind of, we're not really, you know, obviously we're going to cover our payroll. We're going to use the money for what it's intended to do, but I'm not in a big hurry to reinvest. I'm not in a big hurry to move that because I don't know. Not only is there uncertainty in the economy, now there's uncertainty with this note, right? And this loan and like, what's going to happen with that? So I'm just kind of like, I'm going to hold it for me personally. I'm going to hold it and kind of keep it and kind of see how this all plays out. Um, what's your recommendation for that? That's that's exactly what we're doing. Um, yeah. We're, you know, we as an accounting firm, we got one and we will hold it and see what happens. Um, you know, yeah. how, how does this whole thing um, end, you know? And um, it's going to be a... It, it'll be very interesting if you remember what happened with Hurricane Katrina and FEMA and all of the the, the craziness yes. that went on. This is so mm -hmm. much worse. Um, yep. Yep. Now you and I were discussing this the other day, and so I wanted to put it in on our webinar. And in this question of is the PPP money really tax free? And so uh, you had an interesting take on this, one of which I agree with, but I think it's probably one we we need to share here with with our followers, our listeners, because I think yes. it's an interesting take. So. so the good news is that the uh, the uh, proceeds are not income. Uh, especially if it's a loan portion, the, the forgiven portion um, is not income to you. However, it's going to offset, uh, you know, if, 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 if you had $100 worth of payroll that you had to pay out of your pocket, uh, but now you're paying it out of the proceeds here, well, your profit's going to go up by $100. So while the money that you actually received is not taxable, if you're still in a profitable position, in effect, it really is taxable because uh, you're not paying some other expense that otherwise would be deductible. Right, right. 100% agree with that because it, it it's basically going to be dropped straight to the bottom line if you're if you're all profitable. Yep, 100% agree with that. So, all right, next one, and we kind of discussed this quite a bit on here. You know, how should I determine if I'm qualified for forgiveness? I would find the person that says yes and then go with it. Right. I don't. To me, I mean, looking at this and thinking through. I am 100% comfortable applying for the loan. I'm 100% comfortable keeping it. Um, I just think the uncertainty surrounding this definitely, you know, because like what we've mentioned on here is that I don't know what's coming. Uh, so, you know, I have determined for both businesses, both Comarch and Triangle, we are qualified and we're going to hold it. Um, you know, and I would say that, you know, that's my opinion. If the bank or someone else who wants to certify that wants to come in and back me up or, you know, check what I'm saying, I am 100% open for them doing that. Um, but I guess if this question is out for other folks, um, you know, how should they determine if they're qualified for forgiveness or not? Again, uh, it's kind of looking in the rearview mirror if you're going to talk about uh, whether your revenues are up or down. But remember that the original reason for the PPP was to keep people employed. Yeah. And I believe that there are going to be a lot of lawsuits in the future uh, on people who are found to have made that certification in error because they had access to capital or because their revenue didn't go down uh, or whatever. But, right. you know, that was the original intention of the act. So, uh, right. you know, you, if, if, if you want to listen to the law firm with, the, with those points, Putting a memo in your in your uh, in your in your files, you know. But at the end of the day, um, we're in the second inning here, first or second inning. We don't know, so I I would hold on to it and then try to sort it out uh, when you go for forgiveness and uh, you know. Um, 
So we've already answered kind of these questions. Is, you know, what should I do now? Should I hold the money until I know for certain? I 100% agree with that. And we're going to end this webinar kind of what I would consider to be the key question. Um, and it is, what are you going to do for your own business? Now, this is a question for me. This is a question for you, Dan. I've already alluded to this. For us, we applied. We got funded. I am holding it until I know. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Dan, for you, you kind of answered this as well. But yeah, and, and I confirmed with my bankers, what should I do here? Because yep. quite frankly, to date, we haven't really felt the pain that other industries have felt. But I don't know how that how long that goes for, um, you know. And so we're keeping the money. We're keeping it. Um, you know, we're 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 going to be careful, and we're going to make sure that it's available should we have to pay it back. But at this point, um, unless you did something criminal, or you received too much money based on the calculation, even though the bank made the mistake, because the bank was the one who was supposed to uh, go through your calculation and make sure that that's the right amount, okay? But I, I definitely, if they overfunded you, I would give that portion back. Well, and Dan, I mean, I think that's a wrap. I think we have done a pretty good job of getting through this, the latest, right? Which I'm sure will be changing within a month or so. Um, but this is going to be an interesting time and it's going to be an interesting it's going to be an interesting thing to watch how this all plays out like what is really going to be forgiven i don't like the prospect of like hey here's the money and then later on being like well actually you know i mean it's just i and i don't think it'll happen mainly because i think there'd just be so many business owners and, there's, and they, how many there's just too much volume but there will be high profile people like Auto Nation and uh, uh, Ruth Chris and, and the Lakers and 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 you know and because it's easy to, to take pop shots at them. Oh, for know, sure, but, for uh, sure. But, but there'll definitely be more of that. So. All righty, and with that, I think we're going to wrap it up again. I'm Donnie Shelton with Cole March. Uh, we again, we're exclusive to the pest and lawn industries. If you have any digital marketing needs. And we obviously help companies grow their business. We provide infrastructure to help them calculate their marketing costs, as well as getting them uh, known online and helping them drive leads and sales at a good rate. Of course, Dan with PCO Bookkeepers, I've been a client of his for a number of years. They do bookkeeping, bookkeeping services, accounting services, as well as M&A work, and a few other things. Dan, if I missed it, you can you can plug in the holes there. But they a great great set of folks over there, at PCO Bookkeepers. Um, you know, we don't have a planned schedule. I was going to say, if, we don't if you have need any help guys. with your accounting, uh, by all means, give us a call. If you're thinking of selling your business, uh, probably not the, the best time to sell it right now. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but, well, valuations have come down and yeah, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, the activity has dried up. But it is a great time to get your business in shape for a possible sale in the future. And we can help yep. you with that as well. Yep. So. All right. And with that, we don't have a planned schedule to push these out, um, you know, kind of what we did before on a weekly schedule. But as things change, I would expect to see more of those. And with that, we'll sign off for this and we'll be back when there's more changes to talk about. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah.